This video was recorded with the Aver Media Live Gamer Portable. Skip it up and that up. Bleed. This is a uh, Steam Greenlight pick. I think that was just released today. It has the whole 8 bit retro graphics thing. It's a side scrolling shooter. It's pretty cool. Um, it border it, it just misses being great because the controls are so damn weird. Here's how it works. The right if you have an Xbox 360 controller hooked up to your PC, which especially with a game like this, I strongly recommend it. The right trigger makes you jump. The left analog stick obviously makes you move and the right analog stick makes you shoot. So it's kind of like how some shoot 'em ups work where you just you just continually shoot with the right stick. It just feels really weird. Like when you play a game like this, you expect it to play like Contra or something like that. And it just, I don't know. I, I don't want to say it doesn't work because I need to play it some more, but it's, uh, it, it's, it's frustrating because I just can't get my mind around the controls. Like my whole game, it's like going against every gamer instinct I have. And as you see here too, there's also bullet time, which is pretty cool. Um, really good production values. I like the music. I like how this level kind of reminds me of a mixture of like Contra and Castlevania. Um, I'm visuals with Castlevania. But I don't know. The controls, man, and the whole triple jumping thing is awkward. And they could have, I don't know. They could have, should have just went with a conventional control scheme. Maybe it'll grow on me, maybe it won't, but if it doesn't, I think that'll be the biggest shortcoming is the controls when it comes to bleed. But anyway, moving on to today's news. So is your body ready for some Reggie news? Because he spoke on the Wii U's power. Today's shout out goes to YouTube user Mr. Couch Blah. Yes, that's his name. I'll have a link to his channel below in the description. So Reggie was being interviewed by Forbes magazine and they asked him, they said, hey, the, you know, the Xbox One's coming out, the PS4 is coming out and they seem like more powerful consoles. They seem they're going to have better visuals. They're more connected to the Internet. What is the Wii U going to have to offer? How is the Wii U going to stack up basically? against the Xbox One and PS4, and this is what he had to say. The processing power of the hardware really doesn't matter. I say that with confidence, looking at the most recent generation of home consoles were the Wii, which the broad industry looked at and said, boy, that seems to be underpowered, but sold 100 million units globally. And the consumers saw the innovation of the Wii Remote and the active gameplay we offered. Even if you look at the generation before that, it was Sony's product that was underpowered compared to the other two home consoles, and yet they won that generation. In the end, it comes down to games. The games drive the install base. The games excite the consumer. So Reggie has a point, and he doesn't. Where he doesn't have a point is the difference between this generation and the previous one where the Wii you know, if you're going by hardware sales, one hands down, is that that motion control gimmick was more enticing, okay? The whole Wii Sports game that came bundled with the Wii, the fact that the casual market didn't move over to tablets and smartphones yet, it was, I mean, there were people, there were grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles who never touched a controller in their lives going out and buying a Wii. That's why the hardware install base for the Wii was ginormous. The PS2, when you're going back to the sixth generation, Reggie, yeah, the PS2 was the most anemic, even though some people argue that because they say, oh, there were other things going on in the architecture, but because it was so complex, people couldn't figure it out. That's what made it anemic. I don't know if that's true or not, but I don't think the gap was as big between the PS2 and Xbox as it might be with the Wii U and Xbox One and PS4. You know, I mean, when games came out for the PS2, they came out for the Xbox in most cases. The only time I remember a game couldn't work on the PS2 and could work on the Xbox was, I think it was Far Cry Instincts, where, I mean, I think Ubisoft was trying to bring it out to the GameCube, the PS2, and the original Xbox, and in the end, they just the, the performance on the GameCube and PS2 was it was too laggy so they just came out with it and made it exclusive to the Xbox but it wasn't that big of a gap and now it could be argued that the Wii U may not have a huge gap in performance compared to the Xbox One and PS4 but 
with the numbers we're seeing right now, it's becoming tougher to believe that. Now on the flip side, it's funny though, all of these developers complaining about the Wii U's capabilities and the hardware is limited, so on and so forth. It's interesting that you don't hear that about the current generation consoles. Well, I understand the Wii U is supposed to be next generation, but let's take Battlefield 4, for example. They're making Battlefield 4 for both the next gen consoles and the current gen. You don't hear them bitching, oh man, the Xbox 360, we can't, you know, we have to lower the resolution, the, the lighting is not going to be as good, and the frame rate's going to, you know, be jump all over the place. You know why? Because it has a ginormous install base, and they're going to shoehorn Battlefield 4 on that Xbox 360, that seven to eight year old piece of hardware, come hell or high water, man, because they want those dollars. And I'll tell you right now, if the Wii was flying off the shelves, all of these developers would be singing a different tune. I promise you. They would all be like, oh, you know, it, it's not as capable, but, you know, it's still a worthwhile platform. Battlefield 4 will be just great on it. And, oh, you know, Activision would be loving it. And Call of Duty Ghosts will be fantastic on it, so on and so forth. Because if the install base was there, they could make their cheddar. And so they won't, they don't care. They could have a, you know, a 6502 central processor in the Wii U and they would still find a way to get the damn game on there. I'm being, I'm exaggerating hardcore, but it's funny how hardware limitations don't matter when money can be made on the platform. That's my point. The bottom line is, Reggie, you need to get those exclusives out there, man. You need to give people a reason to buy your console. You need to do better marketing with the console. I've talked about that a thousand times before. You need to go and do better public relations with these third-party companies and give them incentives to get games on the Wii U. You need to give people that total package and let them know the damn console exists. Trust me, I still have faith in the Wii U. If I still own the console, that means I have faith in it. I think my longtime subs could tell you I change my mind on hardware like the wind, and if something bores me, I get rid of it, trade it in. I haven't traded in my Wii U, so that's saying something. So... Come on, let people know that the system's good. Yeah, it may not be as powerful as the PS4 and Xbox One, but it's good enough that good games could come to it, both first and third party, and you need to get it out there, get those games out there, and let people know that the Wii U is here. People still don't know that. Anyway, folks, make sure to rate, comment, favorite, and subscribe. And if you have an interesting news story you would like me to discuss, private message me with a link via YouTube. And if I use your news article, I will give you a shout out in the video and feature your YouTube channel in the description. Have a good one.